Okay, this is a quick video um, on how I prefer to produce uh, tubes or tunnels in uh, Hammer for Half-Life 2. Um, one of the biggest things that really irritates me personally with uh, the Hammer editor when you're creating tunnel uh, tubes and things, uh, which is the really basic method, is where you simply create uh, a, a cylinder and uh, then make it hollow. Um, I'll demonstrate here. Uh, so here's our, um, let's get it in the right place in the view really, so here's where we're creating a cylinder from scratch um, and uh, okay there's the primitive created so I use solid, I select cylinder in the objects, draw on a box on the shape that I want and then when I hit return there's a cylinder. Uh, there are extra settings where you can improve obviously the number of sides you have to your cylinder but this is just a basic demonstration um, and then obviously this, there's two ways you can uh, kind of do it you can cut one cylinder, smaller cylinder out, uh, smaller, smaller cylinder out of a larger cylinder uh, or you can select your cylinder and then choose tools uh, and make hollow if I can remember where it is there it is and then obviously select whatever size you want on the walls. Once you've done that you can then select um, the, if, if you switch to objects, I think it is, there we go, so what we're doing with groups, if you choose groups it's all grouped as a single entity when you've done the uh, uh, make hollow, but uh, switching to objects means you can select one of the objects of that cylinder and then if you want to remove the ends to make it a simple tube, there you have it. Now the, the reason I don't like this is because when you take a close look at the way it's done it, it's just sectioned it off in a really kind of, uh, well artificial way really, um, and I, I just feel that it's a little bit untidy, especially when you come to scaling and things like that. It's no real biggie, a lot of people probably use it happily like that without any troubles at all, uh, but I've noticed uh, that weird things happen, uh, particularly one of my colleagues has uh, said that uh, he has trouble with the fact that uh, it seems to lose the texture on one of the sides after using this method or whatever method similar to this. So I'm going to start again from scratch uh, and this is the real method that I prefer to use uh, creating a cylinder. I still use the actual cylinder creation tool as my guide uh, but it's the actual uh, method it's a bit more detailed and probably some people probably think it's unnecessary and cumbersome but I just think it's nice and neat uh, when it comes to the actual editing stage so instead of creating a large cylinder quite happily making a small flat circle and then for my inner uh, part of the cylinder I'm simply going to make another cylinder sorry for my tube I'm going to make another cylinder inside uh, the larger one uh, if I just draw it up to the edges there, that should be all right, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's nice and even to the top of the first one. And bang. Now, you can see we've got two objects. We've got our original cylinder, uh, sorry, uh, and then we've got like the smaller one inside. Now, although I've created these two objects, I actually only use them as a guide. I'm not actually going to use them as the final product. Um, you can see here it's done a nice layout on here of uh, the inner circle and the outer circle. Obviously it wouldn't really matter with the number of uh, sides that you have. The, the, the method is the same, it's just the more sides you have the longer this is going to take. Uh, once I've created that I then go back and I create uh, a block. And where the first joint is for the cylinder side I simply draw a block around that area. Now, um, because we're dealing with uh, the shape of a cylinder, obviously the block isn't uh, going to match perfectly to these points here and here at this scale. Um, so what I do is I start off at the 64 grid scale uh, in this demo and then I will work down to the lower ends when I come to make my shape. So box created. Uh, it doesn't really matter how long it's going to be at this stage, but I'll create that now. So there's my box. And now what I'm going to do is use the carve tool to match it to these points. So first we'll go to uh, selection mode, zoom right in, and I'm going to drop the grid size right down until one of the grids hits that point. 
in this case I've managed to reach it at just grid 2 so I'll drag that over now with my snapping to grid as you would and I'll drag that up just make sure that hits that line yeah excellent so now our box actually meets all of those points at, at some of its sides now I use the carve tool here on the left or clipping tool and literally I'll just cut off any excess from there and I'll zoom in just to make sure that I hit the right point I need to be really accurate about this bit and so you can see with the clipping tool I don't know if, you, if you're familiar with it but basically clipping, kick, clicking it once will allow you to click one, choose one side clicking it again means it will delete the other side third time means it will just split the object but actually keep both sides I want the first option which means I just want to clip that side so hit enter on that and now we've gotten rid of that next I'm going to cut this shape from this point to this point again checking it lines up yeah that's nice I want to get rid of this excess and I'm just gonna pause for a second right so second part cut I'm gonna carry on now and cut the third part so oops what have I done there I think I've forgotten to click confirm on that cut or have I let's start again select cutting tool there we go that's what we want get that on get that one in there ah now you see it's accidentally I've selected to cut the wrong area there so I'll hit that again hit it again and then we get the one we want perfect now we've got our per first uh, section uh, carved literally from a square block using the other points as a guide I'll do the next block so same deal again draw a block make sure its lines go through all four points uh, I'm just going to do that at that and edit there and go through this line go through that line go through those perfect oh no we've missed it there there we are right now now we've got this we can start carving it so same again hit the carving tool draw from the top down to the side get in make sure it's in the right place and there there we go done and go for this one so start from here and go to here that one's on target I like and uh, so it's that one so right cut the red enter and same on the last one there we go right now because I've obviously chosen eight sides uh, each of the four sides only comprises of two I can now actually delete these two entities that I created originally as my guide so here's my quarter of a tube from that shift holding the shift key down dragging the object away uh, oh hang on no I'm gonna undo that before I make my duplicate I'm gonna bring the grid back up to 64 or whatever scale you're operating at because this matches those grids nicely there's no point in trying to guess that bit we might as well just have it all nice and chunky so shift drag chunky down and now I'm going to uh, rotate the object so for that we do tools transform and I think it's on the Z axis we want this to rotate so if I hit 90 degrees I've gone 90 degrees the wrong way no problem we can take that up here and choose all four this time shift oh to select the extras by the way if you choose one object control holding the control down select another one another one and another one and obviously it does multiple selections but if you're a windows user you probably knew that anyway and then I drag that down again holding shift to make a duplicate one of the wonderful things of hammer 
and again I'm going to uh, rotate the object with transform rotate Z axis and this time we're going to do 180 degrees to flip it right round and we've got our nice tube albeit small it's more like a ring at the moment once I've got them all together we can then obviously choose tools and group and you've pretty much got the same object that you would have had with the creation but with the nice uniformity of these trapezoids linked together which I, I just think is a lot tidier and works a lot better and then of course when it comes to texturing and things like that just make sure uh, that you apply to all sides or do it however you want um, I hope this was useful to anybody who has any troubles with creating tubes um, as I say I mean to be honest it's really easy to make a tubing hammer this is just a what I think is a nicer way of doing it and much tidier and neater uh, when it comes to actually uh, making your final maps and models it's easier to follow these lines and, and know what you're dealing with and it doesn't matter how many sides you use because uh, it all just marries up nicely thanks very much for listening